This our residential side of things is kind of set up in this space here. So uh, yeah, I think it's more So Sean, you here. have to introduce yourself though. Not everybody knows instinctively who you are. I know who you are. Well, fortunate to be here at this show. <laughs> Great to get out and, and be at one of these again. Sean Guyberson, I'm the Canadian sales manager for Taco. So anything that comes in a box and that uh, that is a, a shelf product is is what I'm responsible for. So. And you missed all around awesome guy. That's the most important thing well, to point out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Show us the booth. So yeah, let's do a quick tour through yeah. here. We'll kind of step in and, and talk about a few pieces. Sounds good. This end of the booth, we talk about our domestic piece, so all of our plumbing goods. And uh, the, the guys did a great job at really highlighting and, and making this a very visual display this year. So we get into things like mixing valves. So tempered water, certainly to match the CSA codes and all of those things are a big deal, right? For the Canadian codes, mixing valves are a component and a standard on everything And even everything if it's not a code, do. the health and safety component of don't burn people. You got it, yeah. you got it. We went through that a number of years ago as that code was being updated about scalding. Yes. And we talked with the uh, sick children's hospitals and just all of those things that came into line. It's best practice, do it, make sure it's a part of the business, right? So, um, so aside from here, as we move up, we're talking more and more about domestic hot water research. Yep. How do you build comfort? But also talking about the usage component, right? What are you gonna waste down the drain waiting for your hot water? So again, this is not necessarily a money saver for anybody, but it's going to do some good things, right? We're not dumping water to this process. We know we pay for it when we receive it into the house. Well, we also pay for that water on the drainage side of things and, and the processing piece. So, uh, you know, Mixing valves, domestic hot water research, we've got a few different ways to do that. We've got some smart components that are measuring habits and building your calendar as it is in that house. So it's dynamic and always changing, always learning. Um, we have leak prevention devices. This is what's called our leak breaker. On the water heater down here at the bottom, we have a sensor pad. Should anything go wrong in that volume style water heater, or even if you want to tag a water meter within your house, we can put a valve like this. It's a three quarter inch full port ball valve. We can put that in play and guard against a catastrophic failure, right? Something that's gonna cost money. So. Now the Taco leak breaker isn't something you just have to use in the house though, right? You can remotely access that, like if you were on holidays or something like that, and so you have any issues with it? We will have a component of this that is Wi-Fi enabled. Nice. It's not a two-way communication at this point. What it will do is alert you there's been an but issue. But that's what you need, And it right? will close. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you don't need to be talking to your leak. You just need to know you have a leak. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, this is a really nice feature wall. As I said, the guys have done a great job. Big fan of the smart um, plug. Thank you. I think the smart plug is one of the greatest innovations. Simple little 10K thermistor that we just put on the pipe to measure that hot water event. So, yeah. you know, you can see things and capture that quite easily. This is one piece I didn't talk about under our little display sink. Oh, here the hot link valve. Is, yeah. our, is our hot link valve. So, think of the opportunities in houses where we don't have a, a dedicated research line. Now we've got the ability to create a, a path in which we'll, we'll, um, we'll come in from our supply with Envision at 6 a.m. in the morning. That entire house is, is there's not a hot water line in it, right? Yep. So we're gonna move that cold water through that hot water line and we're gonna purge it, essentially pushing it back to the water heater. So we, we allow flow to cross through this valve and go back to the water heater. Now, would you use that on a water heater and a tank list, or would you really want to see that used only on a water heater? Great, a yeah, center? great, great question. This one here, because it's only a quarter GPM flow through that valve, yeah, you we got a lot it. of those manufacturers on the tankless world that go, that's not even gonna fire our gas yeah. valve. So, yeah, yeah you've and gotta look at those. a gallon a minute, your burner's no, not gonna that's fire. That's right, that's right. So, fun valve, great opportunities with it. A lot of those houses we're going into, they're still tank style. Well, so my house, house, finished top to bottom, Yeah, it's got a very poor plumbing system from the 90s, and something like this is ingenious. It's very easy to put in, solves my problem. For, for a valve like this, many homeowners don't know there's a solution. They've moved into a the house, they're like, wow, I mean, wait a long time, right? Yeah, for First sure. thing they do when they move in, what do they, where do they go? Yeah. They go to the showroom and buy shiny stuff. Yeah. And it's got even more flow restriction to it, which means the wait's even longer. Yeah. So as a tradesperson coming in, 
to recognize the opportunity and make this suggestion, hands down, great, great Simple, way to go. Simple, easy way to deliver Absolutely, comfort. absolutely. Very cool. So, we got well, the step, 026 here. Yeah, let's look at that for yeah, a second, let's, Sean. let's step next door here. So you got so, two different models, right? You got the standard model, and then you got the stainless model. Well, let's, let's, let's even accentuate on that a little more. Let's do it. We've got the standard model for your heating applications. We've got the stainless for your potable. We've also got its counterpart on the other podium, which is gives you the programmable side of things. So that's the basic version, we've got a plus version. So the plus version gives you a display and lets you incrementally do more things than what a three or five setting type of dial will give you. So those applications where you really want to pinpoint something in, the plus version is going to give you those opportunities. So where do you see the dominant application for this circulator? Yeah, so by 26, we're trying to determine or, or state the foot of head that this thing's capable of. So 26 is gonna give you 26 foot ahead. If we look at the long number, it's also gonna say there's 50 GPM capable on that. I see these, whether it be snow melts, bigger geo jobs, um, domestic, uh, you know, indirect water heaters, things like that where we need that more volume. So yep. it's kind of a number two product in our, in our Canadian marketplace where we can see the 26s playing that role. We use a lot of these, but like these circulators are really good circulators. In a lot of cases, what we're seeing is guys are instinctively going to much larger circulators they don't need to. So you guys are fortunate as a company, you can fill everything, but people really need yeah. to come back and assess what are we using, why are we using. Having, having said that, and I, I agree, great great comment but having said that there's also when you get into an ECM product the ability for this thing to dynamically move and shift so you're not always overstated right you 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 could make an absolutely wrong selection but in most cases you've got the ability for this pump to move up and down in speed therefore trying to correct some of the issues. It's no longer a technology penalty. If I go put a 0026 in somewhere where I needed yeah. a 0015, yeah. it's still gonna work. Absolutely. I just paid for a 0026 yeah. where I should have yeah. paid for a 0015. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, you're still, your efficiency is gonna be better. Your system, the system efficiency is going to be better. But yeah, it's still overstated, right? If, yeah. if you make that, that selection wrong. So, yep. so yeah, so we've got the dial setting and as stated on the other table here, the 26 and 34s, uh, we can move into a plus version on that, on that piece. And I'm sorry, let me back that up. The 26 is only in this version. The 34 comes in both the plus and a standard version. So we could see the same dial as we see on this for a 0034. Okay, so the so 0026 gives us that display, which is nice. You know, it's nice to be able to see what the circulator is doing. 0026 only gives us the dial. The plus, yeah. sorry. The, no, the plus is only available on the 34. Oh, okay, I, good I apologize. Catch. Took you down the wrong street on that one. Um, awesome. Platform, dimension, dimension, everything's the same. It's just more functionality in, in that version, okay? Awesome. Um, Let's look at HSS. Let's you, just talk about that. You love this beast. <laughs> so Can I sneak by, guys? Thank you. So obviously I'm a big fan. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you more tune this in. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be the bystander on this one because I think it's a great product. But uh, so we'll yeah. give a shout out to our mutual friend Patrick Scannelbury. So yes. Patrick Scannelbury used to work for a rep agency that handles Takeo products. He's still very much in the industry. He's a friend of Sean and I's. He first be human. introduced me to the Takeo HSS software. Yeah, it's complicated software. You have to understand what you're doing, but you can build out just about any kind of system. So we would do at Eden Energy the the day job, the real. Yeah. Thing. You know, we would design boiler plants, water to water, air to water. You can build anything in here. You can even do air side, domestic side. Like there really is no limit to what the software can do. The cool component to this software is really what's going on behind the scenes because everything's got a load, right? You can associate a load and then what it's going to do is figure out all of those loads together and tell you the size of pipe, it's gonna, it's gonna look at your head loss. It's gonna give you all of those pieces that you know we would typically have to go after and, and research, right? Well, and the thing that we left out that we should probably lead with is you don't have to pay for this software. Takeo provides this software. It's, it's missing a few features, but I can tell you that I still use the free demo version and it's got every functionality that a hydronics nerd needs it, for heating and cooling. It can sure beat the pen to paper mode. Oh, it's way right, better, right? right? Well, you're right. You can go onto our website, download that thing right from the website and away you go. That's awesome. So, so, yeah, it's a it's a very cool component. Very cool. Uh, why don't we step onto our our wall just over here? Let's, let's do, do that it. one. Big crowd we'll on the W18. So let's step over to this piece here. We'll 
sneak in here and have a conversation, Michael. Right, so now so, we've got sort of what I would call the bread and butter of you Dago. Got it, we've got you the got it. relay boxes, which are fantastic. We've got the different circulator options. So in, in Canada, the, the 0015 and 0018 are quite common. There's a little bit of confusion between the difference of them. Can you walk through some of the differences between the 0018 and the 0015? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So U.S. market, the 007 is by far the predominant player. Everybody's familiar with that. And the, why is that? Why is the 007 for the Americans? I, I will say that that happened through our, well, our, it's going to be our legacy in which we've done with our OEM components. So everybody saw that. It was supplied with boilers, it was on every job, it was in every basement, so it just became the associated product out there. In the Canadian market, we have this thing called three speeds. And so as we started this endeavor to, to build a bigger market share in the Canadian market, the 0015 was perfect for it. And we wanted to bring that so-called three setting type product to it. And so with the 0015, what you actually get are three modes. Those three modes are going to give you five foot ahead constant pressure. It's going to give you ten foot ahead constant pressure on the medium setting, and then it's going to give you full speed on the high setting. So it, it really is a job or a, a product that's got a lot of opportunity to to, uh, to end up on just about any any type residential job. What you also get as we step forward and we move we move into the 0018 is now you get that that really. It's, it's our secret weapon. Yeah. The 0018, what you get in that is a, a technology component. We've always said, boy, if we could only see inside the piping and know what's going on. And we've got a great display on the other corner. Maybe we'll camp back to that one shortly. But what the 0018 does, it's got a Bluetooth component. We can open up our phone. We can pair to it just like you would do any Bluetooth device. And providing we've got the app, now we can see the dynamic position and duty point of where that circulator is operating. I think one of the key things to point out about that 0018 is a lot of contractors, and as somebody who worked as a contractor previously, get intimidated by smart technology. What I like about the 0018 pump is it quite literally is like my Bluetooth headset. If you can figure out how to hook a headset up to your Bingo. phone, yep. you can figure out how to use this 0018. Yep. It's a really slick product. It's really good for diagnosing and setting up systems. If you need four gallons a minute, the 0015 will get you there for sure. The 0018, you can dial that thing in as Precisely. closely yep. as you want to get. Yep, yep. And so, so we look at that 0018 as, as now you can see the different modes. We've got a fixed speed mode. Great for just trying to dial in and say, okay, I want this delta T across a, a product. Okay, good. We can we can maintain there and, and dial that speed in, and it's infinite speed from basically four watts to full speed at 44 watts. So that's a great one, and we can learn a lot from that when we are actually setting it up because we can see what is going on, how much piping, the feet of head. That's always a mystery when we go into a, a re and re. So that gives you a good indication. If you've got zone valves, we're going to put that baby in zone valve mode and go, all right, this is where we need to operate. Yeah, just right? remind everybody that so the numbering again of how Taco uses that, what that 0015, what that 0018 actually means yeah. to people looking at so it. So like we just came away from uh, another product, the 0026, all of our ECM products we're trying to now denote the feet of head in which that product code means. So in a 0015, we kind of limit that thing at a 15 foot head. That's its max. So it's going to give you, on a visual, you know exactly where that would fall out. 0018 is the same. The 7 is kind of in that 7 to 10 foot. So there's a bit of legacy component still in the 007, but really moving forward as we start to make sense of our nomenclature, any product you see a label on like that in the 00 series, it's going to it's gonna speak to the foot of head. Okay. Well, the the last comment I'll make on circulators is I feel like Taco has been mislabeling their three speeds. I've noticed in the field it should have been labeled small house, medium house, <laughs> big house. Last thing to show. <laughs> and you know one of the, one of the neat pieces we actually do on our box is we define that feet of pipe, right? We we uh, we've looked and done all the calculations. And it's like hey. If you're 85 feet at three quarter inch pipe, here's where you should be, right. right? If you're, here's where you should be. So we try and do give some guidance on that as well. Yeah. So, so as, as we wrap up, there's one yeah. more thing we have to look at, and that is the air and the dirt separation that takes. Yeah, very, very cool. Can you walk us very through cool. how that product's different than other products yeah. on the market? Yeah. So let me just let me just start by saying those two components are super important today. As we get into smaller passageways and boilers tighter components in the heat exchangers, circulators that have magnets in them, 
All of these components scream, let's make sure we, we, we remove the micro bubble side of things because if we can get that down to a level where there's no oxygen in there, well, we don't have to deal with corrosion, right? So, so one of the things I see people doing a lot, Sean, you have a good illustration of it, is you guys have an auto air vent at the very top. Yes. And what'll happen is installers, and I was guilty of this as an installer, is when we flush the system, they think that air vent is actually taking the air out of it. What they don't realize is almost 5% of the system volume of water, when you fill it with 65 degree water, almost 5% of that is air. Absolutely. That's not taking it out. As no. we heat that up, this coalescing media inside of the separator is what's going to actually allow yeah. that air to come out. So spot on. You, you mentioned the word or talked about the, the word coalescing. When you you have to have a media device in there because you're only going to get out those big bubbles. They, they tend to float around on the top of that, that water, right? So once we go to a coalescence device or medium, so in there we have what's called a pole ring. It's a 316 stainless steel ring. It's got a ton of surface area while providing very little uh, pressure drop through that device. So you've got high capacity, you've got uh, the ability to shut that valve off. One of the things I'd like to speak to as well as we talk about commissioning and you know that startup, in the top or in the front side of this, there's a little screwdriver stop in here. Yeah. We like to say, hey, commission this for longevity. If we crash through our system water pressure when we're filling this or city water pressure and you've got an open vent, you allow that vent to slam up, you've got all of that air that will leave quickly, you're going to deal with cutting oils, you're going to deal with burrs, you're going to deal with all kinds of things that could, right on startup, take that vent out of play, right? Because we've got a little snubber valve in there that that, that could take um, you know some sort of a debris. Yep. So we say close them down, fill a system. Once you then start the pumps, go back open your air vents. Yeah. It's a great way to do it. It's going to give you the longevity. So moving aside from that one, typically in the hottest place, we go with our our um, our air de device. We now have the magnetic counterpart to it. So we've got a magnetic dirt. It does have the pull ring component to it as well. We've got a removable magnet ring on there. So when you when you go to clean this device, this is a really a nice feature, right? So you can actually rotate the magnet around. It has the separation, as Sean's saying. Yep. That allows that debris, the ferrous material, to fall out. I also love the valve with the cap on the bottom because at the end of the day, we need yep. to purge it out yep. somewhere. So. so we talk about with this device, and I'm just going to pop this off here, with this magnetic ring, it's all about gauss and you, somebody might look at this and go that's a pretty small magnet really because we want something that's going to lift something up it's not actually true what we're looking for is to create a magnetic field that's got the power to just grab that little particulate that's in there so it's about the field right and that's that's the yep. term gauss so so we would take that off and then we would open that valve to blow that down you're just going to look for clear water and put it back in play yeah. so fantastic device great companion partner to the uh, the, the, the air vent. It's a really so. nice setup. It really well illustrates what Tago has. I realize we didn't talk about the relay boxes because everybody knows about them. The Tago relay boxes are really nice. They're expandable. They can work on pretty much any job, whether it's pumps or valves. Anything else that you'd like to say? I, about I, it? I think really comes down to when you're when you're installing a job, you want to make it simple. Yeah. You want to make it as simple as it's you the can. Kiss. You want to make it repeatable, right? And you want to make it serviceable. So yeah. if you can keep those three pieces in mind, it's really what every company that's doing an install and service wants to do over and over again. Yeah. So simple, repeatable, serviceable. Well, I'd All like right. to say that I think Takeo makes really good products. Obviously, as you know, I am a customer. Our company is a customer of Takeo products. But I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. Takeo is one of those few companies, and this is no BS, the best people, best humans. You're a good dude. Fantastic, man. Thanks for making time. Thank you. Thank you.